I think when we're talking about follicular lymphoma, um, we're hearing among us all a kind of slight, not disagreement, but a, a lack of clarity on whether we need to be going for our most aggressive therapies first, and or whether we have a more approach of more gentle therapies, keeping things for, for later on. In, in CLL, another indolent disease that we're haven't been focusing on today, the data is much more clear that using your most aggressive therapy upfront results in the best outcome for the patients. And we're seeing overall survival advantages in that setting. And in that disease, there's a much clearer algorithm in terms of using optimal therapies early on. That data is still not here. We don't have overall survival data that tells us exactly the sequence of events that we can have. And what you're left with then is this hybrid of, of some patients starting very gently, other patients starting with, you know, chemo immunotherapy plus maintenance. That whole approach alters the whole algorithm of where, of where you are. And of course, we've also talked here as if we're talking about you go from one therapy to another to another, when in fact, often you can go back to the previous lines of therapy. So it's not quite so clear cut that you are necessarily having to move from one class of agents to another. It depends exactly when the patient relapsed in the setting. So I think we're still struggling with what exactly is the approach that we're, we're taking in our patients here. I'm gonna to turn to the, uh, to the other John on the other side of the Atlantic. So what's your take on the whole, on this notion? Do you, do you hit people hard up front like the, I shouldn't say hard because it sounds like it's associated with adverse events, but like the, the CLL model or, um, or are, you know, are we doing a more gentle approach or, or can you say anything about it? Do you have to, is it individualized? Yeah, I think um, generally speaking, I'm not taking that approach because Unlike CLL, the, the advances in follicular lymphoma have been more incremental. I mean, the hitting it hard sort of thing, um, when you're talking about chlorambucil versus abrutinib in CLL, that's, a, that's a, a, a huge leap forward as opposed to, for instance, obinutuzumab versus rituximab, or in, in my mind, rituximab maintenance, frankly. So I think these are um, it's given the track record of lack of benefit long term and survival from from early interventions and aggressive interventions in follicular lymphoma until we have drugs that are big leaps forward um, I think that um, and that are more definitively big leaps forward it's harder for me to justify that that said there's always wishful thinking right and so sooner or later something is going to be that thing that we should be using sooner and should be treating more aggressively with earlier. Um, but as of now, I don't, I don't see it. This is an important question, so I want to get everyone's take on this. Pierre Luigi, so you know, your, your view of this. So I, I totally agree with, uh, with, uh, with John in, in terms of a uh, European view. So it's, it's so heterogeneous the situation. You can decide to start as soon as possible. You can wait and, and also the decision to which kind of uh, treatment to do? It depends by the by the history of the patient before. So from the front line and then the second line, and then also from the comorbidities of the patient, the age of the patients, uh, the the performance status of the patient. This, uh, there are several uh, uh, factors that you can, according to that, you can decide what to do in terms of uh, third, four line, and so on. So just you know, before we turn to new agents. Or any, you, you, you're, you in agreement with everybody or you, you have a different view? So I am in agreement with everyone, but I think that the, <laughs> I try to be diplomatic, but the, um, I think it's really important to look at the CLL experience mm -hmm. and comparatively highlights that we don't know how to identify patients with risk models, whether it's clinical, clinical molecular, um, clinical genetic to try to find who's at risk for poor outcomes. And maybe by selecting patients at risk for poor outcomes before treatment will help decide who you should hit hard from the beginning versus who can tolerate um, less intensive therapy and have a better course. So in CLL, we've got FISH, cytogenetics, IGVH mutation status, P53 mutation that helps us predict the, the story for that patient. We've been trying, but in follicular, really don't have anything similar to help select patients. I think if 
we did better selected studies, we probably would find a group of patients who benefit from a more intensive versus less intensive upfront or seek subsequent approach, but um, really have been unable to do so thus far. There is one thing to pick up on that. Of course, the, the frequency of P53 abnormalities in, in follicular lymphoma is exactly the same as the frequency in CLL frontline. And yet in CLL, it's been a major factor on how you treat. And of course, that's largely because we've got an agent which is able to be effective. But it's long recognized in CLL world that giving chemoimmunotherapy makes no sense in those patients. And yet we continue to give chemoimmunotherapy to the patients with follicular lymphoma who have that abnormality, well, which I, we I aren't even testing I was about for. To say, I don't even think we even know who has it, so at least in the United States. Well, sure, but we know from the studies that have been done that the frequency yeah. is the same as it is in CLL. So, um, and we know when it's been looked at that it has exactly the same poor prognostic impact on chemoimmunotherapy. But what drives you not testing for it is what do we do if you've got it? We, we don't have a, a, an agent. But maybe that would be the agent in whom you would consider using, a, as, as has been the model in CLL, using a very different therapy upfront, avoiding chemotherapy completely, which makes sense in the, in the absence of a functional P53. So maybe it is time that we started to think about and incorporate. We've always got a lymph node biopsy, We've got, all got labs that test for P53 analysis. We could be doing it in follicular lymphoma, and it's a little bit surprising to me that we aren't doing it more.